This is amazing. Microsoft has released the most advanced form of RAG till date, which is Graph RAG. Instead of just using the conventional chunking and followed by retrieval method, this uses a different approach for answering the questions and the answers are pretty amazing. In this video, we'll see how you can also use Graph RAG to build your own first graph RAG application. Let's start. So here I have the terminal in which I have already created an execution which was so long. Now I'm going to explain all of those. Unlike uh, me just showing the command, I'm going to explain what happens. All right. First things is you need an OpenAI API key for this. Without an OpenAI API key, you won't be able to do this. You need an OpenAI API key right now. So that is probably a flip side right now. But I hope soon the community will try to um, create support support for LLMs like Gro uh, LLM APIs like Grok or any other APIs. All right. First thing is you need to create a graph drag project. Okay. So for that, uh, you will run python hyphen m graph rag dot index hyphen hyphen init hyphen hyphen root. Okay, so this will create your project. So in that you will be providing your dot. Okay, so what happens is your input should be in your input folder. Here I'm using a book from uh, Gutenberg uh, Live project which is on Christmas Carol, a book written by the famous author Charles Dickens. Alright, so this is a very long book. Um, it is around 3000 lines, right? Uh, so it, it is a pretty long book. We are going to use this as input. Make sure that you have your input as a .txt file or .csv file inside the input folder, right? Now what it will do is, it will create your this folder which is output okay when you uh, you know call this init fold init right what happens is you will have a folder known as prompts as well as this folder these files should be created your dot env file and settings dot yaml file in your dot env file you need to provide your graph rag api key which is your open ai api key just fill it here okay so once you do your initialization in the root and if you are you know um, having these settings.yaml here you can see it will take graph rag api key where for embedding it is using text embedding 3 small and llm i have changed it to gpt 3.5 turbo because that is the least costliest um but you would be shocked when i see how when i say how much it costed me to create this right but it was worth it i'll say okay so here um they are providing api base and api version also theoretically i'm saying i'm not practically saying it theoretically it should support um no grok llm at all probably you can replace your grok api key here and change this api base to grok api open ai compatible url probably it might work i'm not sure okay but yeah that should be an option but if you want me to try, let me know in the comment section. I'll try and let you know. So that is about your configuration. Okay. So that will be your first step. You are initializing your project here, which is a graph rag project with the help of root. Now you need to create your indexes. So for that, you will call python hyphen m graph rag index hyphen hyphen root space dot. You are not initializing it. You are indexing it now. Okay. So that is where your input comes into the picture. You have your .txt file and that will create your folder like this this is not needed okay so this folder will be created which has two folders one is artifacts okay and then another one is reports in reports you will have all your logs okay whatever is did here all the logs will be here if you want to go through you if you have some time you can go through those okay and here you will also have the indexing engines log okay the engine which indexed right uh, which is your open ai embedding uh, running engine those logs will be here as well but we don't focus on those we fi uh, we focus on these files which is your artifacts files 
okay in stats talk jason you have some stats uh, which i don't understand really to be honest with you but there are lots of files um, which you can go through unlike you know uh, just saying okay these are there we will be seeing what is happening okay um now when i call this it took me some time okay this is how it created the first one was it was creating base text units okay if you go into this folder which is create base text units let me copy the path those are all just parquet files okay all you need to do is just copy those and paste it in a notebook okay create base hyphen text units not parquet it's running now let me show you the df here you can see these are your chunks okay you are having a id a chunk and your id and chunk id are the same and then there is the thing called they have provided a document id okay here the document id is same why it is like that because you might face some situations where you will face multiple documents okay so that is why it is like that and then they are creating an entity graph which i am not able to see okay probably um, I'll see if there is a software where I can see uh, the GraphML uh, XML file. Okay, so if I found that, I'll show you these. So there are lots of graphs being constructed here. One is uh, base extracted entities, and then they are summarizing those entities, and then an entity graph. Okay, all of these are created. So for all of these, again, there will be a parquet file which will have the XML string graph ml in the format of xml string um so if you can you know visualize it well and good you can find a graph ml viewer and then put your xml file there okay but now we are going to see about the create final entities file okay because if you see it has eight columns okay 350 rows and eight columns but we need to know what is going on behind so that we can assume what happens okay i'll explain what is happening while uh, it is working uh, that is later okay but it is very important that you understand at the base on what are the files in here so if you run create final entities right here you can see you have an id which should be a chunk id or your um, name id and here it is trying to find all the entities in your file and then it is trying to find the type with a description from where the entity was found for example charles dickens was found in this description with a person in it so the same was arthur rackham and so on and so forth and this text unit ids are where you will be able to find these names okay so for example project gutenberg is something you'll find in these text ids okay now rather than having just chunks you have something where you know this is your entity and these entities are available in these chunks okay that is something you have created right now in create final entities okay and then they'll be creating nodes okay because this is following a graph approach so for that again uh, whatever name is shown here all you need to do is just replace here create final nodes here you can see now that you have your title here your type here the description the source id so source id is what are the documents which are there here so community um this is very important actually uh, i'll say what is community later okay and then you are having an id for this specific um description okay so those are the things which is available here and then the more important thing is you have a top level node id um probably i'll make a detailed video on graph rag very soon because there are lots of columns i need to explain about and i also need to explore in detail about a lot of those we'll see about this later okay here those are your nodes okay but we need to focus on communities because this um graph rag runs two different types of searches one is local search and another one is global search okay so here you can see these are the communities okay there is community 5 which is its number which has all of these relationships entity relationships inside that and this will have all these chunks inside it okay so they are trying to build kind of clusters inside a document so for example these all these all should be related together based on these topics something like that is what they are trying to construct so that you won't lose a context 
which is something very usual with a conventional uh, RAG. Okay, so similarly, there are some other files as well. For example, final relationships. I'm not going to show all other files, so we'll be seeing this file alone create final community reports. Okay, so if I run this here, you can see this is the most important file actually. This is going to be your, uh, for example, your phase vector store which we create, right? This is what it uses. So this has all the content which is there for the community 39 and then a title for it, a summary for it, a rank explanation for it. What are the findings which led to making this, you know, community and then a community ID for those. Everything is provided here. Okay. But we focus more on the community created, which is nothing but a group of chunks, which has some relation to it with each other with a context. So for example, here, the first community is about explaining the ghost and Scrooge's Christmas journey. The second one is Scrooge's transform transformative journey with spirits. The third one is about Scrooge and Christmas spirits and then transformation and so on and so forth. Okay. So yeah, that is how the file is constructed. And now, like I said, there are two different searches. Okay. The one is local search. Another one is global search. Now you have your global search. Global search is a type of search which will happen across communities. Okay. So I'm not going to go in detail complex and all. Okay. It will go across communities. So for example, you have around uh, 50 communities. Okay. It will happen across 50 communities. That is how uh, it happens when I ask to know the moral of the story. You need to know about the whole story, right? So this was its response. The story primarily revolves around the themes of redemption, self-realization and the transformative power of compass, compassion and empathy. Through the journey, characters like Scrooge and Bob, the narrative emphasizes the importance of embracing the holiday spirit and so on and so forth. It gives a very detailed response, which used these reports, community reports, community report number 41. Am I able to find that here? Let me see. 15 is there. Okay. Am I able to see 15 here? Oh, for example, yeah. This was used. Scrooge and Christmas Spirits is a report used in this. Christmas and Scrooge transformation is used in this. 48, 49. The report numbers which is used is given here. Okay. So those are the references. That is amazing. Okay. It said from where it tried to create this. So like I said, it is happening across communities. So the most important file would be this one. Okay. So make sure that you understand this file, which is create final community reports. Okay, that is how, you know, the global search happens. But when you go on to the local search, right, it will not focus on communities. It will rather focus on a single community, more focusing on its entities and relationships. Okay, so for example, if I find an entity, let's say Scrooge, I'll be finding the relationships of Scrooge. Okay, so is Scrooge a kind person? So that will be in a relationship. So something like that. Okay. It will be like a graph. So first you will find a Scrooge entity and then you will go on to the relationships um, the entity has. So for example, Scrooge will have a lot of relationships, Scrooge entity. Those relationships will be seen and based on that an answer is provided here. Okay. So local search will be more on a specific entity and global search will be more across communities. Okay. If you have some specific question, you should go for local search. If you have a more generalized question, you should go for global search. That, that is the difference between local and global. Um, I hope this should be more detailed uh, understanding rather than just saying uh, local search and global search. Okay. So the, my initial views of GraphRag is that it is very amazing. Um, it is good on Microsoft to release this as open source because now you can use that. The only flip side right now is it uses OpenAI and it took me around a dollar actually. Um, not exactly a dollar, but to create these much files around 0.7 dollars I'll say. Um, which is a pretty large thing for me. Um, hopefully they provide support for croc or replicate kind of APIs. But yeah, I like this. And I think uh, RAG is, you know, now a mile ahead from what it was before. Thanks to Microsoft for that again. 
So yeah guys, I hope you all like this video. If you all like this video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, hit the bell icon. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, cheers.